Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am uh, surprising you, I guess, in a sense, and coming on uh, because I had a moment. I got ready in time. I'm sending Marie and Joe a message right now uh, on texting, and who else needs a message that I am coming on live today, and we're going to study Acts chapter 20. Before I catch my flight out, I should uh, remind you all, please do me a huge favor and write a prayer for me to forward on to my uh, brother, for Mary Catherine, my niece. Uh, if you need an idea of a format, I post every day on five of my Facebook pages, uh, Salem Valley Ministries, uh, Cheryl Salem Private, uh, well, I guess you'd just say, I don't know what you call Friends page, and then Cheryl Salem public page, and if you have asked to be my friend on Facebook, and I have not uh, accepted you, it's because that page is full, and, and I've just, I've basically stopped worrying with that, just go to the fan page, go to Salem Family Ministries page, follow those pages, like those pages, and uh, we'll be connected that way, but I'm posting every day an update from my brother, and a prayer for all of us to pray together each morning i send him a prayer from uh from me and from you any prayers that you send me i forward on to him and he uses those prayers uh, daily because he is overwhelmed at this point with so much and my sister in love too uh, with all the 24 hour a day seven day a week care that it takes to take care of someone who has not received the manifested miracle yet so uh, I could go on and, and talk about all the details, but I think you get it by the Spirit. They need a miracle, and they need our prayer. They need us surrounding them in prayer. Saying that now, I'm also saying to you, um, it is time to pray for uh, Pop and me today. It is time to surround us in prayer. It is time to... Um, cover us because we are getting on a plane uh, today and we are leaving on a 12-day uh, trip counting the two travel days so we need your prayer cover we need you to pray for us and with us and we have services and or meetings literally every day uh, for and sometimes twice a day we'll hit the ground running tomorrow uh, we have a taping with pastor kevin at four o'clock and then we have at, at Mount Hope, and then we have a six o'clock meeting at the Gilead Healing Center, um, Victorious Valentine's service for all. So if you're in the Lansing area, please make your way over. Uh, it's a free meeting, a free service, and we'll be having a great time together there. Uh, our product tables will be set up, and um, I'm going to be doing the worship with Laura, so it's going to be a great, great day and evening. And so just come and join us, please, 6 o'clock tomorrow evening in Lansing on, I think it's 202 Kreitz Road um, and the Gilead Healing Center, 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. Then Sunday we'll be in House of Prayer. I'm giving you time to come in this morning. Uh, we'll be at House of Prayer, and they're already in full-blown revival. Uh, their worship is amazing. I'll be worshiping some, too. And then... We will uh, get ready and start the second school of worship this year from Salem Family Ministries, and we partner with House of Prayer. We have 60 registered. It's going to be a powerful school. We've had to move out of the smaller room into a much larger room to have that bigger school. It's going to be amazing. God's going to do great things. Don't forget, Monday's my birthday. Celebrated with my precious family last night, so we're doing great just uh, to say anna thank you good morning i know you guys are having some weather there jennifer good morning thank you for watching over my mom uh, you and brandon there in mississippi in choctaw county good morning Jean. will there be live stream of any of the meetings i don't know about gilead house of prayer is definitely uh live streamed on facebook it's a uh, house of prayer dash hazlitt uh it's hazlitt uh michigan so uh, House of Prayer dash Hazlitt. That's on Facebook. They do live stream their Sunday morning services. Remember the three hour time change. I believe it's stuck, but it's saved on their Facebook page. So uh, if you don't get up early enough to see it, you can watch it later. And then uh, I don't think any of the school will be uh, live streamed, but I will be coming live 
throughout uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with our Bible study. So uh, that will ha be happening. So don't miss Bible study next week. And please do me a favor, even right now, as we're getting ready to turn into Acts 20, would you please hit the share button right now? You, if you don't know how to do that, you X out of live chat. You uh, give me a thumbs up before you hit the share. Hit the share button. It comes up and it says copy link, message, blah, blah, blah. I, don't, I go copy link move it over, hit Facebook, and and hit those pages. Now, I have five, so, but I'll just hit one to let them know we're live. So, and then that way, come right back to YouTube, and voila, there we are. Hit live chat, and down it comes. So, um, someday I should do a video on this, how to pack for a 12-day trip in a pool bag, because that is the biggest trick that I do. Good morning, Cynthia, Sunny, Celinda. Crystal, a good morning. Uh, thank you, Chris Salinda, for my birthday card and my gift card. I so appreciate that. I will spend it wisely. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Becky, Laura, Joe. You found us. Good morning, Tiffany, Tish, Natalie, Kim, Lucy, Elaine, Brandon. Good morning, Jean, Savannah, Ruth, uh, Michelle, Jesse. All of you thanking God for you coming in. Good morning, Laura Coconara. I'll see you tonight. Good morning, Christina, Martha, Vanessa, Jean, Sunny, Charlie, all right, and uh, Lupitas. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for coming in. Don't forget, order your new book. Don't forget to um, get registered for the School of Worships coming up in Burbank and Fontana and Gainesville, Texas. All right, that's, yes, Laura says church will be live streamed. All right, now let's run into this chapter because it's powerful and amazing. The Apostle Paul goes to Macedonia and Greece. When the uproar finally died down, Paul gathered the believers and encouraged their hearts. He kissed them, he said goodbye, and he left for Macedonia. At every place he passed through, he brought words of great comfort and encouragement to the believers. Then he went on to Greece and stayed there for three months. If you're just coming in, I welcome you. Pull up your chair to my table and let's study the Bible together. Grab your coffee, tea or water, and let's study what God has to say to us today. Just as Paul was about to sail for Syria, he learned of a plot against him by the Jews. So he decided to return by going through Macedonia. Seven men accompanied him as far as western Turkey. They were Sopater, son of Pyrrhus from Berea, Aristarchus, and Secundus from Thessalonica, Gaius from Derby, and Timothy, Tychicus, and Trophimus from Western Turkey. These men went ahead and were waiting for us at Troas. As soon as all of the Passover celebrations were over, we sailed from Philippi. After five days, we joined the others in Troas, where we stayed another week. On Sunday, we gathered to take communion and to hear Paul preach. Because he was planning to leave the next day, he continued speaking until past midnight. Many flickering lamps burned in the upstairs chamber where we were meeting, sitting in an open window listening as a young man named Eutychus. As Paul's Sermon dragged on. I think that's a funny way of putting it, and I've looked it up in several translations, but it all basically gives you the same uh, idea that Paul was just preaching on and on and on and on, but he had a reason. So he's preached for hours, and this is a young man sitting in a window, and a young man, I don't know, he could be very young, but he's hanging in there with the big, with the big folks, with the adults, trying to stay awake. As Paul's sermon dragged on, Eutychus became drowsy, and fell into a deep slumber, sound asleep. He fell out the window, three stories to his death below. He fell three stories out a window, and he died on the ground, of course. Paul went downstairs, bent over the boy, picked him up, pulled him up in his arms, and embraced him. Taking him in his arms, he said to all the people gathered, Stop your worrying. He's come back to life. What faith does it take? To live like that. What power of God inside of you does it take to live like this? I've experienced this in my 
almost 50 years of ministry, 41 years of ministry, walking in the Word for, for 50 years. I've experienced this, but this is, this is a whole nother level that we have available for us. Each and every one of us have this level available for us. So, Paul went back upstairs, served communion, and ate a meal with them. Then he picked back up where he left off and taught until dawn. Filled with enormous joy, they took the boy home alive, and everyone was encouraged. Now think about that. I believe that would probably build the faith of the room. One time I was in Washington, D.C., and I was the uh, Sunday morning speaker at a, at a big um, secular event. And they, uh, it, it had been going on for several days, and then they had a Sunday morning service that was optional if anyone wanted to come. Well, we had like 6,000 people there. And uh, I was on the platform giving my testimony, and I'd given the altar call, and there was like, no, get, no kidding, 3,000 people at the altar getting saved. And so I'm on the platform, 3,000 people are at the altar, so you can imagine I get word on the platform, miracles are happening, I'm having words of knowledge, people are getting healed all over the crowd, people are getting saved. I get word on the platform that a woman has died in the back of the room. Now, uh, and a doctor is in the meeting and he has pronounced her dead and taken his coat off and covered her head. Well, the Holy Spirit says to me, get back to her and touch her and I'll bring her back to life. Now, I would not have done that on my own, but the Holy Spirit told me. This is what I'm telling you. When you walk with God, you have to listen. You cannot be moved by something you've seen before or something that you want. You have to be moved by the Spirit of God. Of course, I want everyone healed. I want everyone raised from the dead. I want everyone's life to be changed in every meeting. But we are under orders of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells me, get back to the woman and touch her. That's what he said, and I'll bring her back to life. And so I couldn't get back to her. There's 3,000 people at the altar. So I just I announced, and so I started climbing over the hands of people. They just put their hands up in the, at the altar, and I just climbed over them until I got to the back of the room. That was the quickest way to get there. When I got to where she was and the doctor was standing over her, he was shaking his head like this, and he'd already put his coat over her head. I couldn't get to her head. All I could get to was her feet. So I reached out my hand as far as I could reach and I just grabbed the toe of her shoe and she sat straight up. I mean, straight up with that coat on her head. Many people saw. She sat straight up with that coat on her head and the coat, of course, fell off. I didn't even talk to them. I did what God told me to do. And this is what I'm telling you. When you walk with God and you walk with the Holy Spirit, you have to learn to do what he tells you to do. Don't sensationalize the supernatural. Don't make it spectacular by your own performance. Don't do that. Don't do that. Obey God and do what God says. 3,000 people were already getting saved. More got up and came to the altar at that point. I climbed back over, got back on the platform, and finished the service. That was just once in that year that happened in three different occasions, different situations, but where someone was raised from the dead. And so I'm telling you, these things still happen today. But we must be totally and completely surrendered to the Holy Ghost and obey. Now, notice what Paul did. He's come back to life. Paul went back upstairs, and he served communion, and he ate a meal with them. Then he picked back up where he left off and taught until dawn. He did, this, this raising from the dead did not stop him from preaching the word. The primary reason we are on the earth is to preach, teach, and heal. To do what Jesus did. He preached, he taught, and he healed. And so he left off and he taught until dawn. Now he preached all night long. And he had a reason. Filled with enormous joy, they took the boy home alive. And everyone, of course, was encouraged. Paul's voyage to, to uh, Miletus. Continuing our journey, we made our way to the ship and sailed to Assos. Paul had previously arranged to meet us there as he traveled overland by foot. They sailed, and Paul traveled overland by foot. So he rejoined our team there, and we took him abroad and sailed 
for mit mitelli. Ah, oh, shoot, I forgot how to pronounce that one. My Tylene. Mytilene. There it is. Mytilene. The next day we crossed over to Chios, and the following day we arrived at the island of Samos. We stayed at Trogilium, and on the day after that we reached Miletus. Paul was in a hurry to arrive in Jerusalem, hoping to make it in time for the Feast of Pentecost. We know he started his journey at Passover, and now he's headed to Pentecost. There's 50 days between Passover and Pentecost, so he's trying his best to get to Jerusalem. It's a very long and difficult journey, but he's planning on making it in 50 days. So he decided to bypass Ephesus and not spend any time in that region. However, from Miletus, Paul had sent a message to the elders of the church in Ephesus and asked them to come meet with him. So instead of him going to the Ephesian church, he asked if the elders of the Ephesians church would join him. When they arrived, he said to them, All of you know how I've lived and conducted myself while I was with you. From the first day I set foot in western Turkey, I've operated in God's miracle power with great humility and served you with many tears. I've endured numerous ordeals because of the plots of the Jews. You know how I've taught you in public meetings and in your homes, and that I've not held anything back from you that would help you grow. I urged both Jews and non-Jews to turn from sin to God and to have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now I am captive to the Holy Spirit to go to Jerusalem without really knowing what will happen to me there. Yet I know that the Holy Spirit warns me in town after town, saying, chains and afflictions are prepared for you. Now he is under strict orders of the Holy Spirit to travel and get to Jerusalem. And yet the Holy Spirit is warning him on a regular basis, chains and afflictions are prepared for you, and he's still telling him to go. See, some would say, if you know chains and afflictions are prepared for you in Jerusalem, then why are you going? Because the Holy Spirit is leading him. There are times when the scripture is absolutely fulfilled in our lives where Jesus talked to the disciples and he said, in this world you will have trouble, trial, frustration, and distress. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So here, the Holy Spirit is telling Paul what is awaiting him. And it's not good. There's nothing good about it. But he is telling him to go on. What's awaiting you is chains. What's awaiting you is afflictions. But I'm also sending you. Now, listen to how he talks to those who are with him. But whether I live or die is not important. Wow. Wow. To those listening, I would say they're going, what? Whether you live or die is important to us. But he's saying to the eternal scheme of things, whether I live or die is not important. For I don't esteem my life as indispensable. There are others who can do what I do. And many of those others in my life are listening to me right now. There are others who can do what I do, and I'm training you. I'm raising you up. I'm teaching you to do what I do. I'm sending you forth with the anointing of God in your life, training you to obey the Holy Spirit and do what he's called you to do. The real key is whether you accept that mission or not and whether you're willing to go through whatever it takes to accomplish what the Holy Spirit is asking you to accomplish. The question for I'm asking you today is are you willing to go through whatever it is the Holy Spirit asks you to go through to accomplish the mission in front of you. And don't just answer without thinking. Because many of you have already experienced things you weren't expecting. But if you can say, yes, I am willing to go through whatever it takes, then you can. I need you to comment. But whether I live or die is not important. But I don't esteem my life as indispensable. It's more important for me to fulfill my destiny and to finish the ministry my Lord Jesus has assigned to me. What's more important? That I finish the ministry and fulfill my destiny. Are you willing to fulfill your destiny 
and finish the ministry God has put inside of you? Are you willing to fulfill your destiny and finish your ministry? It takes a start. You must start. Fulfill your destiny and finish the ministry that God has put inside of you. He's assigned it to you, which is to faithfully preach the wonderful news of God's grace. I've been a part of your lives and shared with you many times the message of God's kingdom realm. But now I leave you, and you will not see my face again. Oh, oh. This is why when I tell you that I'll be speaking for, pa for Natalie, for Pastor Natalie and Pastor Esther at Courageous Women on March the 12th, and I tell you I need you to come, I need you to come because I have no guarantees if that won't, won't be the last time we get together. I have no guarantees that you'll be alive on March the 13th or I'll be alive on March the 13th. I have no guarantees. That's why this whole cultural society that puts things off, I'll catch it next time, I'll do the next school, I'll go to the next service, hurts my heart. For you have no guarantee of another. I have no guarantee of another. The rapture could come and we could be snatched off the earth or you could just be snatched off the earth, or I could just be snatched off the earth. That's why I take it so important, so valuable, every opportunity we have to gather. I take that as the, the most precious gift, and I prepare for you and make a way for you. Please do not diminish our time together in the throne room. Please do not diminish our time together here during our daily Bible studies. Please don't diminish our time together when I come to your area. Make sure if I have come that you do the effort too and get yourself up and get dressed if you feel well. Don't come if you don't feel well because I don't want to see you if you're not feeling well. And you will not see my face again. If any of you should be lost, I will not be blamed. For my conscience is clean because I've taught you everything I could about God's eternal plan and I've held nothing back. So he's telling them, I'm not coming back this way. God's already shown me. I won't be coming back this way. So my conscience is clean. If you don't receive what I'm teaching, that's between you and God. If you don't obey, if you don't do what the Holy Spirit is telling you, that's between you and God. I am not responsible for your obedience. I am only responsible to teach you. So plan your, so guard your hearts. Be true shepherds over all the flock and feed them well. Remember, it was the Holy Spirit who appointed you to guard and oversee the churches that belong to Jesus, the anointed one, which he purchased and established by his own blood. I know that after I leave, imposters will have no loyalty to the flock. Now listen to this. I know that after I leave, imposters, who have no loyalty to the flock will come among you like savage wolves. Even some from among your very own ranks will rise up twisting the truth to seduce people into following them instead of Jesus. And I cannot tell you how many times I have watched people on a church staff split a church and they were imposters, they were wolves among the sheep and the shepherd trusted them because they were on his staff, or they were his staff. And so as he trusted them, they came in, they were imposters, they had no loyalty, look what this says to, to the flock. It's not talking about loyalty to the shepherd. It's not talking about loyalty to the father. It's talking about, they don't have any loyalty to the flock, or they wouldn't split the church. If a person loves the church, they would never split it. If you can't agree with what the pastor is doing, don't let the door hit you on the butt on the way out. Please get out. But do not take people with you. If you cannot agree with what's going on in that house, don't stay and stir up strife among the brethren because the word says in Proverbs, God hates that. Don't stir up strife among the brethren. Don't be mouthing about the brethren. Don't be mouthing about the pastor and don't be mouthing about that church. Get your butt out. Nobody needs you there. If you are unhappy, leave. But if you take one person with you, you have no loyalty to God's house. This is the most simple scripture to understand, and yet it's not taught enough because too many people get, get un, 
unduly influenced by the demonic realm to divide and conquer. It's what's going on in our nation right now. It is a it is a spirit straight from hell to divide and conquer our nation. And it tries to get in houses of worship, in flocks of people called the church. And it tries to bring division. And God hates it. And I do not want to be doing something that God plainly says he hates. If you've got aught with the pastor, either work it out or get out. But don't take the church with you. Don't take up action of the church with you because you will be held accountable according to this. So be alert and discerning. Remember that for three years, night and day, I've never stopped warning each of you, pouring out my heart to you with tears. See, Paul is saying, I've been with you equal on the earth as Jesus was here doing his ministry. I've been here pouring my heart out to you, praying over you, crying over you, trying to train you, trying to teach you. And so now I entrust you into God's hands and the message of his grace, which is all that you need to become strong. I feel the Holy Spirit telling me that we have just finished one year. We are right now almost into one year. And I feel like three years is a significant number for us, even on our time frame. I feel like 2024 is going to be a significant year for us as the church. I wonder if we are on a countdown. I just wondered. I felt as I read that number, the Holy Spirit quickened within me that this is an important number and that we've already finished one year. We have 2024 to put our eye on. All of God's blessings are imparted through the message of his grace, which he provides as the spiritual inheritance given to all of his holy ones. Now, I want to read that to you again. And so now I entrust you into God's hands and the message of his grace, which is all that you need to become strong. All of God's blessings are imparted through the message of his grace, which he provides as a spiritual inheritance given to all of us, his holy ones. Stop looking around for something else. The word of God and the spirit of God is all you need. If you will stay in the word of God and if you will pray in the Holy Ghost, you will survive and overcome and fulfill your destiny and your purpose. I haven't been after your money or any of your possessions. You all know that I've worked with my hands to meet my own needs and the needs of those who have served with me. I've left you an example of how you should serve and take care of those who are weak. And I'm telling you, I feel like I could say these very things to you. I have offered you opportunities to covenant with us, to, to receive the impartation that's in my life through your financial gifts, but I have not coerced you. I have not made it hard for you to come in every day free of charge to be a part of what God is doing. It's my honor to teach you. It's my honor to entrust what God has given to me to you. It is my honor to bless you. And I feel just like Paul here. The Lord is my provider. And thank God he uses you many times. And I am so thankful for that. But I will never look to you as my support. I look to him. And then when you obey him, I am so thankful for your obedience. I am so thankful every time you obey God. And it causes me to pray for you even more and to ask the Lord to give you a greater impartation because of the divine covenant that it creates. For we must always cherish the words of our Lord Jesus. I have left you an example of how you should serve and take care of those who are weak. For we must always cherish the words of our Lord Jesus, who taught giving brings a far greater blessing than receiving. After Paul finished speaking, he knelt down and he prayed with them. Then they all cried with great weeping as one after another hugged Paul and kissed him. What broke their hearts the most were his words, you will not see my face again. Then they tearfully accompanied Paul back to the ship. I do believe you'll see my face again. I do. I do believe that, but I am telling you that if this were the last time that you saw me, please finish your course. Follow your destiny and do what God has called you to do. Stay in his word faithfully. Do not be so lack of loyal and lack of faithfulness that you're in and out and in and out and in and out. Stay in his face. Stay in his word. Worship him with all of your might. Finish your course. 
Finish the ministry that God has assigned you to. Do what he's told you to do and listen as the Spirit guides you each and every day throughout the day. You're precious to me more than you know. Please pray for us today as we journey. Please pray for my precious Mary Catherine. Please send me prayers that I can forward on to my brother so that he can use those in the daily prayers that are being sent out in the updates. I, I just thank God for you. I thank God that he's protecting you. May you be safe. May the blood of Jesus cover you. May the word go in front of you and behind you. May it be a light to you. May the Holy Spirit be your helpmate at all times, surrounding you, keeping you safe and in his care. And I will see all of my Michiganders, and I will see you uh, this weekend starting tomorrow at Gilead Healing Center and then Sunday morning at House of Prayer and then school all next week. It's going to be a great time. And then I will see many of you who need to register. If you are in Southern California, you need to be registered for both Burbank and Fontana. That will give you a two-day of school, one month apart. You need to get registered for that so I can count that you're coming and get prepared for you. And if you're in the Texas area or the Midwest, I'm counting on you to come to Gainesville, Texas and be with me there. And we will change the atmosphere in that hub of the, um, what do you call that part of Texas that goes up like that? The panhandle, I think they call it. I love you all. I will see you very soon.